4 o'clock in the morning, I wake up. 4.30, 4.45, I'm doing some sort of cardio. Open these garage doors, it's still dark outside. I do this and then I'll have breakfast and then I will go do all my strength and conditioning training at a gym for about an hour. And then I'll go to set. We all average probably about five hours of sleep. It's 4.45 a.m., it's still dark outside. Look at that, the lights just went out and I'm getting ready to kill this AM cardio. You can't even see me, but it's gonna be so good, it's bad. Focus! If you do anything, you never want to do anything half-assed, especially when it comes to your training. Get in, be intense, execute on it, and then get out. For a lot of guys out there, and I was certainly one of those guys in my 20s, I thought I had all the answers, I didn't know shit. By the way, in my 30s, I'm still trying to find myself, as a lot of guys are out there. Hopefully when you hit your 40s, you're hitting a nice stride. If I'm gonna do it, I need to do this job right, I need to stay focused on it, I need to give the best effort I possibly can. We live down here in South Florida, it's hurricane season. Focus! But when it's time to go to the gym, we gotta get to the gym. And there ain't no stopping us. It's like I'm gonna be the baddest motherfucker walking it. All right, empty gym, the way we like it. It's Sunday, just finished my warm up. This pain ought to be fun. Focus! I work out twice before everyone wakes up. All right, workout number two. I'm out working all my competition. All right, Saturday afternoon, empty gym, the way we like it. It's leg day, which means it's gonna be sweaty, painful, and fun. And one of the most important things that I've learned along the way is the value of time. So it's, it's understanding what your skill set is, finding the right place to use those skills, and then going for it. What kind of a story can you tell in one minute? That ability to get myself up in the morning, no matter how tired I was, uh -huh. to push myself through those pain barriers. You know, hard work pays. Continually find more ways to use our time while trying to find more ways to save it. You know, I have the same work like someone's trying to take it all away from you. You see, you can't actually save time. You can just find different ways to spend it. So when you say you don't have time to do something, you're really saying that you're using your time for other things. One cool thing about time is that it continues on at the same pace, despite how busy we get. It's this time now, so we must readjust our comfort zone. See, now it's time to go to a different thought process. But the goal remains the goal until you write it on a piece of paper. Then it becomes a vision. What is the vision? Because the only reason I'm here, the only reason we're here today is because of our yesterday. <laughs> Everything I've been through has defined who I am right now. What's the goal? What's the vision? Before anything great is really achieved, your comfort zone must be disturbed. It's the, it's the only way it works. It's the only way it works. If we don't understand what's we, what we must take back, we will never grow. The world is like a ride at an amusement park. And when you choose to go on it, you think it's real, because that's how powerful our minds are. And the ride goes up and down and round and round. It has thrills and chills, and it's very brightly colored, and it's very loud, and it's fun for a while. Some people have been on the ride for a long time, and they begin to question, is this real? Or is this just a ride? And other people have remembered, and they come back to us, and they say, hey, don't worry, don't be afraid, ever, because this is just a ride. It's just a ride. But we always kill those good guys who try and tell us that. You ever notice that? And let the demons run amok?
but it doesn't matter because it's just a ride. We can change it anytime we want. It's only a choice. No effort, no work, no job, no savings of money. A choice right now between fear and love. The eyes of fear want you to put bigger locks on your door, buy guns, close yourself off. The eyes of love instead see all of us as one. People want to know how to stop the laziness and they want to know how to stop the procrastination. And, you know, they have some idea in their head, you know, some kind of a, a vision of what they want to do. But they don't know where to start. They don't know where to start it. You know, they don't know where to start. And so they say, hey, wh where do I start? And, and when's the best time to start? And I have a very simple answer for that. Here and now. That's it. You, you want to improve? You want to get better? You want to get on a workout program or a clean diet? You want to start a business? You want to write a book or make a movie or build a house or a computer or put together some mobile application? Where do you start? You start right here. And when do you start? You start right now. I had beaten my habit of hitting the snooze button. I couldn't believe it. And I thought, wait a minute. Counting backwards? That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Well, the next morning I used it again and it worked. The next morning I used it again and it worked. The next morning I used it again and it worked. And then I started to notice something really interesting. There were moments all day long, all day long, just like that five second moment in bed, where I knew knowledge what I should do. And if I didn't move within five seconds, my brain would step in and talk me out of it. Every human being has a five second window, it might even be shorter for you. You have about a five second window in which you can move from idea to action before your brain kicks into full gear and sabotages any change in behavior. Because remember, your brain is wired to stop you from doing things that are uncomfortable or uncertain or scary. It's your job to learn how to move from those ideas that could change everything into acting on them. You should wake up worried, terrified every morning, but don't be worried about our competitors because they're never going to send us any money anyway. Let's be worried about our customers and stay heads down focused. One of my jobs as the leader of Amazon is to encourage people to be bold. And people love to focus on things that aren't yet working. Um, and that's good, it's human nature. That kind of divine discontent can be very helpful. But uh, you really, you know, it's incredibly hard to get people to take bold bets. And you need to encourage that. And if you're gonna take bold bets, they're gonna be experiments. And if they're experiments, you don't know ahead of time whether they're gonna work. Uh, experiments uh, are, by their very nature, uh, prone to failure. But big successes, a few big successes, compensate for dozens and dozens of things that didn't work. I've made billions of dollars of failures at Amazon.com. Literally, billions of dollars of failures. because we know from our past experiences that big things start small. The biggest oak starts from an acorn and you've got to recognize, if you want to do anything new, you've got to be willing to let that acorn grow into a little sapling and then finally into a small tree and maybe one day it'll be a big business on its own. 
Amazon started as a very small company. Um, it was me and a few other people. I was driving all the packages to the post office myself in my 1987 Chevy Blazer. You can't skip steps. You have to put one foot in front of the other. Things take time. Uh, you, there are no shortcuts. And, uh, but, uh, but you want to do those steps with you know, passion and ferocity. It's easy to have ideas. It's very hard to turn an idea into a successful product. There are a lot of steps in between. It takes persistence, relentlessness. Is that stress primarily comes from not taking action over something that you can have some control over. Do something you're very passionate about. I wanted to project myself forward to age 80 and say, okay, now I'm looking back on my life. I want to have minimized the number of regrets I have. And you know, uh, I knew that when I was 80, I was not going to regret having tried this. I was not going to regret having wanted, you know, trying to participate in this thing called the internet that I thought was going to be a really big deal. I knew that if I failed, I wouldn't regret that.